Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee and you can find me at creativelyyours.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and so excited that you're here joining me today for our crafty fun. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. So can you believe it is already April 23rd, which means we're in the last couple of weeks of April. So crazy. So crazy how fast time goes. But with that being said, there are a few things I want to make sure that you're aware before we jump over and start our crafty project today. So don't forget, this is my awesome April promotion. So there are still lots of awesome, awesome, awesome items to choose from. So this is where I give away items in my crafty stash to you when you place a an order with me. So just shoot over to my online store. Um, order the items that you don't want to miss out on the last chance list. And remember, there's some carrying over items um, that the stamp and dice will still be available or the stamp and punch will still be available in the new catalog, but the discounted bundled price will not will not be. So if there's any items that were on your list that you're like, mm, maybe, maybe not, now's the time to get those and do your savings. And then there's a whole bunch of items that have been marked down up to 60% off. Don't want to miss those. Definitely don't want to miss those. So, all right, what else do I have going on right now? So one thing I want to make sure you guys are aware of is that as a demonstrator, we get to pre-order goodies out of the new catalog. Yay! Love, love, love that. So this is a great time to join my Diamonds team. You could put pre-order products right in your starter kit and get jumping. It's an awesome time to start. Um, with new and exciting things coming our way. So if you've got any questions, I'd love to chat with you about joining my Diamonds team, All right? Um, I also have a couple of events going on right now. Um, so um, registration is open for the new Cultivated Creativity, which is our May kit. Um, and we are featuring the uh, Simply Zinnia product suite. So this is one of our online exclusives. So we're mixing some brand new catalog products as well in there, but um, this one's gonna be fabulous. Perfect for the uh, spring, summer timing. It's bright, it's cheerful, it's fun. Um, so hopefully you'll join me for that. Um, so that will be our May kit. So that'll actually ship out June 1st. And then I've got a catalog share and an in-color club that you can sign up for as well and participate in and both give you some extra good gifts. So if you want to keep up with everything I've got going on, and I usually have a lot going on, definitely be on my email list. You will get emails from me that let you know what's going on and give you opportunities to join in all my fun events that I've got happening. Uh, plus, every month I send you a tutorial bundle, not one tutorial, but a bundle of tutorials um, so that you have some fun crafty projects ready to go, right? Like you can just pull those down, pull out some items in your crafty stash and get creating. You don't have to think about it, right? So um, I love sending that out as a gift and I get a lot of really good comments from people um, that really enjoy each of those projects. It's a wide variety um, and lots of fun stuff going on there. All right. So that is definitely what you want to do is sign up for my email list so that you are in the know. All right, let's go ahead and switch the camera over and get started on our crafty fun today. All right. Okay. So today's project is going to feature the Unbounded Love stamp set. And so this is all part of the larger suite. Let's see if I can find this in the new catalog. There it is. Unbounded Beauty. And so we're going to use a couple products actually from this. Um, so I'm going to pull in the um, Unbounded Beauty Designer Series paper as well as the In Color Glimmer paper, which I love, 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 love. All right, so this is the stamp set we're going to be using today. And then this is the project we're doing. So this is a quilted card using your paper scraps. So I love this. This was inspired by a project I saw by uh, Heidi Collins, actually. Um, so isn't this fun? I think it's super cute. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with our quilted pattern. So I've got a piece of three and a half by, actually, yeah, three and a quarter by five and a half basic white cardstock. Now I've got a piece of adhesive sheet that I've cut down slightly smaller than that. And I am going to peel the backing paper off and apply the adhesive sheet to this paper. This is gonna make it so much easier for me to apply all these little strips so that I don't have to put adhesive on each of them. Oh whole bunch of it came off at once. There we go. 
There's one backing paper. And then let's see if we can get this last one off. There we go. So we've gotten the backing paper off on each of those. Now I like to run my bone folder over the top of this just to make sure I have a really good adherence um, with the adhesive on this, okay? Nice. All right, so we've got that. Now I've pre-cut some strips of designer series paper. So this is a great way to use lots of scraps. So like I said, I use the Unbounded Beauty uh, designer series paper and you can lay these out and kind of put together your own little pattern, however you want to do it. Um, on this one, the original one, I used, um, I was going more towards the purple pinks here, and I used a berry burst for my sentiment. I'm gonna pull in the peaches and corals on this next one. So we're using the same exact paper, but we're gonna change this uh, print that we're using in the background here, and then we're gonna um, change our stamp color or ink color. So let me kind of lay these out and see kind of the pattern I want to do. So I do want to use all of them, right? I think that that is fun and exciting and you want to mix and match how your colors play out. All right, so that I've got two of each print, right? A front and a back of each one. Okay, so let's kind of order these so that they kind of, I don't know, kind of flow a little bit here. So maybe I'll move this one out here. I kind of like what I've got going on there. What do you guys think? All good? I think I'm going to go with this. We're going to go with that combo right there. All right, so next I want to do is I want to pull the backing paper off this adhesive sheet. Now, again, I want to make sure I have this on here really, really good before I do this. And then let's pull this backing paper off. Now, sometimes my adhesive sheets, look, so you can see that, right? Like the adhesive kind of balled up there and it didn't lay flat. I think we'll be okay, but I think I might go ahead and just run a little bit of tape runner across that area. I may, may regret that at some point. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these little strips and I'm going to lay them across this piece of cardstock. Now, they're longer right? So I know that I can't get all of those perfectly even. It's just not in my DNA, right? I'm going to make a mess with this. So I'm not even going to try, right? It doesn't even matter. But what I want to do is make sure that I'm butted up one strip to the next against each other, right? And this is all going to adhere right down to this adhesive sheet, which makes this super easy, super easy to do. Right? Versus me having to put glue on each one of these strips. Wouldn't that be a pain in the patootie? Yeah, we don't want to have to do that. So you can do these with any paper, right? Any scraps that you've got left over would work great. You could do this with solid cardstock um, if you prefer. But I love designer paper. Well, first of all, I love designer paper, right? But... I think designer paper adds so much more texture um, and excitement, right? It's a little bit more fun to it when you can use designer series paper. Just has a little more wow to it, right? If you are not a fan of designer series paper, I don't know what to tell you. So this is one of many of our brand new papers that you're, you're gonna find in our new catalog here that starts May 1st. Now I am doing a uh, new paper share as well as an in color club. So if you would love to get your hands on a sampling of each of our new designer series papers, my share is a great way to go about it. So you get a six by six piece of each of the papers. I'm actually doing it over a two month period. So you can um, kind of help uh, divide that cost up so it's not hitting you all at once. Um, so that's kind of a nice, nice way to go about it as well. All right, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut out of this loveliness here. I wanna cut out of here two squares that are two and a quarter inch um, by two and a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this straight, right? Let's go ahead and get that off, off our plate there, right? And then I want to go ahead and cut this at two and a quarter. So let's see. Let's trim just a smidge off this edge because it's not quite straight, which is why we made it larger, right? Exactly why we made it larger. 
And let me go, <laughs> I'm gonna need to go ahead and cut this one straight as well. Although, I do wanna make sure it's at least five and a half, so I don't wanna trim off too much. I might have should have gone a little bit longer. There we go. I'm at my five and a half inch. The reason I want to be at five and a half is because I want it for the inside of my card as well. I'm going to use my leftovers. So let's go ahead and cut this at two and a quarter. Okay. So I've got this leftover piece. We're going to use that on the inside of our card. And then I'm going to cut each of these down to two and a quarter as well. So I just need two of them that are two and a quarter. So I've got a little extra um, that you could use on another project if you'd like, okay? Now, I wanna take each of these and I wanna cut them in half diagonally. So if you put your points along that paper trimmer cutting channel, that will work out perfectly. But you don't wanna cut into those points or you're gonna crush them. So let's start somewhere in the center, right? I'm gonna cut through and I wasn't perfectly straight, it's okay, we'll work that out. Um, so I've cut that in half diagonally. Now I'm gonna take this and put it straight against that ledge and I can cut it in half again. Okay, so I've got two right there. And then let's do this with this piece as well. So you want to get it as centered as possible, but you know what, we're human. We are not gonna get them all perfectly straight every time, or at least I'm not. I don't know about you but I am definitely not. Okay, one more here. And then we're gonna do one more on this. And I lost the corner of that. We'll see how that plays out. I've not had that happen to me before. Okay, so let's move our trimmer out of the way. So we've got these little corners that didn't stick. And that's probably where my, um, uh, my adhesive wasn't there, right? Okay. Now, you're gonna notice when you cut these apart, you've got some that have the strips going horizontal and some that have them going vertical. So I'm gonna separate these. I want my vertical ones and my horizontal ones separated. Whoops, backwards. All right, so let's work with our vertical ones. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a pattern out of this, right? So I'm just gonna lay them out first. And what I'm trying to do is match up my prints so they create a fun pattern. So see how that kind of does that, um, kind of meets that pattern there. And then same thing here. Am I making any sense, right? So my patterns all kind of make sense and they, they create a nice fun grid there. I like that. And then we're gonna put our other, so this is actually gonna be on the diagonal here. And then we're gonna put our other, our straight ones on either corner here. Nice. So it makes a really fun quilted look. Now, I like being able to ad adhere these down to a square. You could do this by eyeballing this and you don't have to do it this way, but I'm gonna do it this way. And so I'm gonna take each of these corner pieces and the reason I'm using my silicone craft sheet is because I can bring my adhesive all the way down to the corner and I don't have any issues with that sticking to my sheet here. So I'm just gonna lay these down. So I'm gonna do each of my four corners first and lay these down first. Now I am gonna end up with a little bit of white space, right? Because the three and a quarter by three and a quarter square that I've got is going to be slightly big. And if I did not cut all my pieces 100% square, which we know I didn't, right? We saw that. Um, so this will give you a little bit of white space. Hopefully it's gonna be very forgiving though. So we'll put these on each of our corners here. Nice, one more to go. Okay. All right. Now, for this next part, if you need to mark the center, go ahead and mark the center. So you can get a pencil and a ruler if you need to. Um, we could use your paper trimmer. So let me bring this in. So this is three and a quarter, right? So half of three and quarter is, let's see, one and a half is three, so one and five eighths. So if I place this at one and five eighths, 
and I do a little pencil mark. Actually, let me use my bone folder here. Use my bone folder right there in the channel. And then I'm gonna turn this one and five eighths. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're covering this up, so it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to find the center. Now you could totally mark that with a pencil if you'd prefer, does not matter. All right, so for these next pieces, I'm gonna use liquid adhesive because then it's gonna give me a little bit of leeway to be able to move this around as need be. So let's get our adhesive on all of our triangles here. And hopefully I, I get them put back properly so that I have my good pattern. So as I mentioned, we're gonna have a little bit of white space left over. And this one triangle is missing its corners. So hopefully that doesn't mess with us too bad either. All right, so let's start off with our top our top triangle here, and I'm gonna put that, I wanna cover that center. Okay, so that one's butted right up. So maybe I did better than my original one, right? So let's see what this one is. Okay, so that is the one that matches up to this. You can see those patterns playing out really nicely. Nice. So I am gonna have a little bit of weight space, but not much, really. All right, so then I gotta figure out where this one goes. That one goes there, right? So again, a little tidge of white space, not much. And then we'll put this one in as our last one. And I'm totally missing both of those corners. So I'm gonna push all these towards the center. If I've got a little white space, I'm gonna try to make it as even as I can while I can, right? So I've got a little more white space on this upper right, upper left. I don't know my right from my left, do I? <laughs> all good so I can rotate it so it could be in the bottom corner if you'd want it wherever you want to put it put it um I think it's going to be fine no matter what I'm going to go I think I want to go this way um but I think that's beautiful right do you guys love that I just think it makes a really cool cool design all right so let's work on our card base so we've got a standard white card easy peasy we're going to fold this in half now, before I get too crazy, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on the inside. So again, on the original card, I used Berry Burst. I'm going to use Calypso Coral on this one because I'm pulling in more of the peachy orange color. So I want to go ahead and stamp my sentiment, make sure that this all plays out well. Okay, so we've got our sentiment on the inside. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So since we've got this ready, let's go ahead and add our layer inside. Now I've got a little bit of white on the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down where my strips did not quite cover it. So we'll just go ahead and slide this in here. Um, you don't have to really worry about the measurement. I don't think that's the important part. I think the important part is to just get the excess white trimmed away. And then you want this to be five and a half inches long because you want it, oh, and it already is because I'd already trimmed that down. What was I thinking? Didn't remember this. All right, so then we're gonna add adhesive to this. Okay, and then this is going to go right on the inside of our card. So you can leave white space if you want to. You don't have to leave white space. That is entirely up to you. And if it is a little bit long, which this one is, we're just gonna trim away our excess with our paper snips. So that is bringing our design to the inside. How pretty is that? I love it, love it, love it, love it. And then we're gonna fold this again. Let's do another quick bone folder along the edge there. All right, so next, let's put our designer series paper down. So we've got a piece of um, Designer series paper that's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So again, I've chosen a different print than I did on my first one, trying to bring in more of that peachy coral look versus the berry um, and, uh, oh, I totally blanked out the color. Ah, uh, petunia pop, there we go. All right, so now I've got my white layer and I'm not gonna adhere this down just yet because what if I mess it up when I stamp? So I'm just gonna lay it down, kind of see what I've got here, and I'm gonna bring in my sentiment. I'm gonna bring in that coral pad again. Okay, we're gonna ink that up, 
and stamp this. So have a blessed day. That's very Southern, <laughs> in my opinion. Works out perfect being in North Carolina. Okay, so I messed that up. So see how my stamping is not as good as I would have liked it to be? So I can either try to stamp over the top of that and align it, or I can flip it over. I get two tries. So that is the beauty of not adhering that down yet, right? So let's go ahead and lay this out and try one more time. And then if not, we're gonna have to just pick one. So now that I know that I did that, I will make sure I put a little extra pressure right there. There we go, I did better. Much better that time. All right, so then we've got our sentiment on there. All right, so let's go ahead and adhere these layers. Now I popped up this white layer, you don't have to but I liked it popped up. I thought it gave it a little extra depth, uh, but you do what makes your heart happy, right? I like the popped up layers. Okay, and one more. All right, and then we'll see if we can get this somewhat straight on our layers here. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it like I can see it, but I have a little bit of a raised edge because I cut this layer on the other side. So just running my bone folder along that just smooths that out. So we've just got the color just peeking out with that print. I love it, I think it's fantastic. And then let's go ahead and get this layer down. Now I, again, I'm popping this up. That's a choice. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, I'm going to because I just like it. Okay. And then you can orient this however you want to orient this. And I am looking to see if I'm somewhat even on my three sides here and then making sure I'm not covering up my sentiment. Now, it bothered me having this uh, meat in the center a little bit. Uh, you could do it and leave it hot as is, but I was like, oh, what a great excuse to use a little bit of our new in color glimmer paper. Who's with me, right? Love it, love it, love it. So I am pulling in this fantastic peach pie glimmer paper, and I've got my B Builder punch, and I'm just going to punch out a little heart to add on to my my layer here. So you guys know our punches come flat and you can unlock them and expand them. And then when you're done, you can lock them back and that puts them on the shelf and it takes up less space. It's lovely, lovely. All right, so we're gonna add this lovely peach pie heart in the middle. So let's get a, see if we can find a mini dimensional. There's a mini dimensional. So we're gonna put that right on there. And then I'm just gonna pop that right in the center. I just think it adds a nice finishing touch, kinda hides a little bit of my um, marriage from my different layers in there together. So fun. So I don't have any embellishments or ribbon on this. I've kept this super, super simple, but how sweet is this? Do you guys love it? I hope that you do. So don't forget, um, we are coming to the end of April, so there's just uh, another week, right? to uh, take advantage of our last chance list, my awesome April special. Um, if you want to join my Diamonds team and take advantage of demonstrator pre-order, yes, yes, yes. We love this time of year, so many exciting things. I'd love to have you join us, right? Get your products at a discount, uh, get stuff early, be part of our fantastic community. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I give lots of lots of perks to my team. Um, so anyway, if you've got questions, please let me know. So if you guys are enjoying the content I'm sharing with you, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing all right. And I'd love for you to invite your crafty friends to join us for our paper crafting fun again next Tuesday. All right. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and bye for now.